welcome to another episode of Gemstone Mine. I'm John, and today we're going to be doing another video deck primer. Today, I want to talk about a deck that I've been working on, which is not necessarily attached to any specific color month or arc or anything like that. Just a deck that I'm kind of excited about. Oh, past John, you sweet, simple fool, thinking that you weren't doing the Ark of Rakdos? When it turns out, you were doing the Ark of Rakdos all along. Because today, I want to welcome you to another episode of Gemstone Mine. I'm John, and it's time for another lesson from CEDH. CEDH is a metagame within the Commander format that sits at one extreme, with highly consistent, highly efficient decks. Not all cards are equally powerful in all formats, or even in all metagames, but there are lessons to be learned from how players are using some of the most powerful cards in Magic's history. And our lesson today in CDH is going to focus on the colors in Rakdos. And I want to thank you again for joining us here on Commander Cookout Media Group. If you're enjoying these episodes, but want something a little bit more casual to focus on, take a look at some of the other offerings that Commander Cookout Media Group has. Curbside pickups of lightning quick, casual gameplay. You can catch episodes of Commander History with Mac and Ryan. And of course, Brando and Ryan doing what they've been doing now for several years on Commander Cookout, the main podcast. And all of these and more are brought to you by FusionGamingOnline.com, your source for all your gaming needs. Now, personally, I'm really excited for Duskmorn. I didn't like horror movies growing up, but as I've gotten older, I've really, really enjoyed them. In fact, one of my traditions every October is to watch the original Halloween. Yeah, the first one with Michael Myers. Mm, absolutely incredible. And I'm honestly pretty excited for what the story is going to be like. I can't wait for Aiden to start covering it in Commander Munchies on Commander Cookout Media Group. And I know I'm going to pick up my singles through FusionGamingOnline.com. In fact, I just picked up quite a few cards for a little mm, Dan Dan related project that I'm working on. If you want to know more, maybe I'll do an episode about that sometime. But for now, make sure to use the promo code that's on your screen to save yourself some money when you order from FusionGamingOnline.com, your source for all your gaming needs. Let's start by talking about Rakdos in CDH, overlapping between black and red with some of the most powerful spells ever printed. The main overlap that you're going to see between these two colors is in the category of cards known as Rituals. All the way back to Alpha, we had Dark Ritual, but it has since been iterated upon and kind of moved into red in cards like Rite of Flame. You have powerhouses like Calling the Weak, all spells with a very low mana value, which can then net you a temporary boost to mana for that turn, often by several turns worth of mana. And of course, the format defining all-star of cards like Dockside Extortionist. Players have known literally since the beginning of the game just how powerful these bursts of mana can be, with one of Magic's most iconic cards being Black Lotus. Rituals don't often see a ton of play in Casual Commander, until recently that is, as instants and sorceries are by their nature a lot harder to abuse and reuse, whereas permanents like creatures, like Dockside Extortionist, are much easier to take advantage of. And Wizards has begun to explore other options for printing rituals, such as in highly sought-after cards like Jeweled Lotus. In Commander, rituals can allow a player to either burst ahead in the early getting ready stage of the game, such as casting an expensive commander off of an early Jeweled Lotus, or just playing out multiple resource engines off the back of a ritual. The difference between CDH decks and casual decks, particularly turbo decks, is that the goal is going to be in those CDH turbo decks to aggressively mulligan for those rapid explosive starts with multiple broken zero cost mana rocks and rituals to catapult ahead. Whereas in a casual deck, you might occasionally draw your jewel lotus or your mana crypt, and it may occasionally let you get your game plan going two or three turns faster, but it's really more the exception than the rule. It's when you really load up your deck with fast mana and aggressively mulligan for it to make sure that you are playing your turn six commander on turn two, that's when you're getting into CDH territory. And Rakdos does this really, really well. They get all the usual fast mana rocks that you're looking for in CDH, as well as all of these great rituals, which many colors have a hard time competing with. And Rakdos tends to have a very clear end goal with it, with either casting a big commander or casting a game-winning spell like Ad Nauseam. 
Ad nauseum is five mana, three black black for an instant with. Reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to its mana value. You may repeat this process any number of times. Rituals and fast mana are the perfect way to rapidly reach that five mana and get a faster nause. And even better, rituals and fast mana have very low mana values, meaning that they ding you for less life loss when you reveal them off of a nause. And the icing on the cake, rituals and other fast mana usually allow a player to go mana positive after a nause. So even if you nearly tapped out to cast your Nas, these players often have the ability to potentially cast all their zero mana rocks and then cast their rituals and chain together enough mana to pull off a game-winning combo. Now, outside of their rituals, Rakdos also gains a big advantage in terms of the consistency that Black's unconditional tutors provide. You know the usual suspects. Demonic tutor, vampiric tutor, imperial seal. Ren also adds Gamble, which is another unconditional tutor, with the downside that you randomly discard a card, which means that you may accidentally discard the card you tutored for. But Rakdos, fortunately, plays out of the graveyard very, very well, and has other powerful tutors that literally just throw cards into your graveyard, like in Tomb. Ren, it's also pretty decent at finding specific artifacts, with cards like Goblin Engineers and finding small creatures off of Imperial Recruiter. Moving outside of tutors, let's also not forget that Black has some of the best stacks and control elements in the game. We have Douthy Voidwalker, Orcish Bowmasters, and Opposition Agent, and the combination also gets the very juicy Mayhem Devils, a 3-mana value devil, which, whenever a player sacrifices any permanent, deals 1 point of damage. It's better than an aristocrat. It triggers off of treasures. In a lot of ways, Rakdos forms a powerful core for the Grixis shell, which is so dominant in so many parts of CDH. And frankly, this is the reason why many players feel like this is some of the highest card quality in all of Commander. But Rakdos is lacking in a very specific element which some CDH players consider to be an indispensable part of the metagame, the color blue. I've said before that where casual Commander is fought on the ground, you will see players accumulating lots of creatures and resource engines and permanents on the battlefield. CDH is, on the other hand, fought in the air, fighting over a stack to see who's going to get to resolve their big haymaker spell. And blue is the only color that really has any reasonable number of proper counter spells, which can reliably stop somebody from scoring that game-winning spell, like an ad nauseum, or a demonic consultation, or an underworld breach. Lacking counterspells means that color identities in CDH without blue have a significant lack of agency when it comes to these scenarios. And the Rakdos player will have very few options to stop the, another player who's going off for an ad nauseum. But that does not mean that decks without access to blue are unplayable in CDH. Our lesson from CDH comes today in the form of a deeper look at how Rakdos can interact with the stack in meaningful ways. And frankly, Red is probably the second best color in the game at manipulating the stack. Outside of White's very respectable and powerful silence effects, Red's fork and deflect effects are some of the best ways in the game to control what happens on the stack. Forks are named for the OG reserve list card of the same name, and they've been in virtual reprints in the form of cards like Reverberate and the new Flare of Duplication, where for either three mana, one red red, or sacrificing a non-token red creature, you copy target instant or sorcery spell and choose new targets for the copy. Your copy will resolve before the original, so you can use your fork like you would a counterspell when you're trying to force a spell that the blue player wants to stop. But you can also use it to try to turn the tables on someone playing a haymaker spell like an opponent's ad nauseum, or even an overloaded cyclonic rift. Deflects are similar to this. Uh, usually they're going to follow the templating of something like Deflecting Swat, which allow you to change the target for a spell or ability. Sometimes you can do all the targets, sometimes only one, like on Bolt Bend. These can also allow for very powerful reversals, and they function like counter spells by allowing you to change the target of the counter spell. That's trying to counter the spell that you're trying to originally cast. From the original target, on to the deflect. 
This means that when the deflect resolves, the target changes, the counter spell then looks for the deflect that it is now trying to counter and just fizzles, allowing you to resolve the spell you always wanted to just get through. From Deep in Magic's history, we also have some cards that are from the remnants of the old enemy colors fighting mechanic in the form of Red Elemental Blast and Pyrobast. One mana value spells for a single red mana, which have the mode of either destroying blue permanents or countering a blue spell that's on the stack. And frankly, it's usually used in CDH to try to win counterspell wars. To be fair, black frankly brings very little to the equation in CDH in terms of manipulating the stack, as its primary way to interact with the stack in 60 and 4 is to strip them from an opponent's hands with discard effects. But in Casual Commander, Imp's Mischief can be a great little deflect that can definitely catch people by surprise. Outside of our pure Rakdos discussion, I do want to quickly mention some other powerful effects that are in other colors. Uh, I think it's debatable if white is better than red at this point at controlling the stack. I mean, silences are unbelievably good, and white has access to some really, really good ones. See our previous episode on the power of silence for more information on that. The white also may be starting to see some additional remand type counter spells in the form of reprieve, which I personally think is fascinating design space. And I would argue that green probably has an edge over black in terms of interacting with the stack, as they have cards like Veil of Summer as well as Autumn's Veil, and a few permanent based effects that can make spells uncounterable like Allosaurus Shepherd or Destiny Spinner. And they even have their own silence in the form of Dosan the Falling Leaf. In Colorless, you can look at some silences like Conqueror's Flail or Defense Grid that can really help you out, or Hope of Gear Pur to shut off a single opponent, but none of these effects are as good as just being able to control the stack with a Force of Will or a Fierce Guardianship. They don't have the options outside of blue to really and definitively control the stack. You can still manipulate the stack, but not to the same strength that blue can. Outside of lacking blue's counter magic, the color combination of Rakdos does also have a hard time interacting with enchantments with only a tiny number of cards like Feed the Swarm and Chaos Warp, which can even target an enchantment for removal. The color combination also tends to chew through its own resources without much in the way of resilience, leading to the live fast, die young sort of mentality, particularly when you're leaning into a turbo build in CDH. To be fair, all of those rituals really do help you get really far ahead. But you can lose a lot of steam when you burn through all those treasures and those rituals and wind up with very few cards to show for it because you got stopped. In the 99, there's a few ways to grind, but it's pretty sparse, which is why you'll often see CDH decks built around value engines like Prosper Tomebound or even Obnixilis rising to somewhere in the middle of the metagame as a respectable showing because they have ability to grind out extra value. The window for most Rakdos decks, especially in CDH, is still to try to win in the early game. Let's see our last episode where we talked about window theory for more details about that. And I'll talk in a couple of moments how this changes when you're going from CDH to casual. But before we do that, let's talk about winning in Rakdos. Red actually has several very well-explored and well-established win conditions in CDH and Rakdos gets to inherit quite a few of these. One of the most powerful in the format is good old Underworld Breed, which when combined with a self-mill or wheel effect, lets you basically loot through your entire library until you hit your game-ending finisher. But you also get the nice compact line of Dualcaster Mage plus Twin Flame, which we mentioned in our episode on Ismskir Iron Eater just a few weeks ago, as well as the well-established World Gorger Dragon Loops, which aren't really that hard to set up with how easy it is to get cards into our graveyard, but I'm always a little bit apprehensive about putting a World Gorder Dragon into play. It just seems like such an easy way to get blown out. Of course, we've already talked about using cards like Ad Nauseum to score your wins, and it really does take advantage of all these rituals that Rakdos is so good at. You can usually find a pretty compact and powerful win condition, which usually layers pretty well into the rest of your goals with your deck building inside of the Rakdos shell. Now, outside of CDH, some of the strengths that Rakdos brings to more casual spaces are ones that many CDH players are actually keeping a close eye on, including the Punisher archetype, 
This is where you play effects which restrict your opponent's game actions by classically dealing them damage or forcing them to suffer other debilitating effects like forced discard. I mentioned Mayhem Devil a little while ago when I was talking about the Stax effects, and this is definitely an iconic Punisher card, which really punishes a lot of different strategies. Outside of these push designs, though, a lot of the Punisher cards are meant and calibrated to be played in formats where players start at 20 life. So many times, the damage that they deal is just not enough to restrict somebody from being able to take those actions. CDH players are interested in this archetype, though, and they've been on the lookout for commanders which could potentially boost this damage universally in order to meaningfully pressure their opponent's life totals. Outside of CDH, though, you can very easily combine many of these Punisher effects with a plethora of good Aristocrats effects in order to create multiple points of pressure on your opponent's life totals. Reanimator is another strategy which has been well explored outside of CDH, and back in the day was a major part of the metagame. And we've already mentioned just how good Rakdos is at getting cards into the graveyard. And in casual, there's often a lot less pressure on players to end the game immediately. A longer clock is often preferable, which means more turns to enjoy those big beefy creatures that you've reanimated. Black and red both bring adequate amounts of board control with the ability to remove creatures and artifacts, and this color combination has often been using the goad mechanic as well, allowing you to force constant combats in order to whittle down both your opponent's life totals and the number of creatures on the battlefield. Artifact strategies are fantastic in this color combination, and they can be really rewarding as you look at all the pieces that fit together with how easily you can access all these different artifacts. However, I do think that one big difference that we can't overlook between Casual and CDH when it comes to Rakdos is just how much the value of Deflects tends to go down. To be clear, I think Forks are still really, really good. The ability to act as a potential pseudo counter spell or as the ability to potentially redirect somebody's game making spell to benefit you or at the very least set them back to is wonderful. But Deflects losing their frequent use case of being able to essentially counter a counter spell, I don't feel they're as strong outside of CDH. I do think, though, that as a lot of decks become more and more powerful, and as you do see more and more counter magic becoming an acceptable part of the casual metagame, I think Deflects are something that you should keep an eye on, and if you're starting to get to those higher echelons where more and more games are being fought in the air and on the stack, you should have access to those types of spells. Especially if you're not playing in blue, the ability to interact with the stack is just too important. But the closer you get to pre-cons, where the counter magic that Wizards likes to include is pretty sparse, the less good I feel that Rakdos's stack-based interaction tends to be. And that about does it for Rakdos. Now, we're kind of going backwards this month, as I didn't realize that we would be doing the Ark of Rakdos until I talked to next week's guest, the brewer of our next deck. I talked with somebody who has an incredible hot brew in the Ark of Rakdos, and I'm really excited to share this one with you, because I finally get to say that there is a legitimate contender for a CDH Goblins deck. You can join us for that one next time. Until then... You can find us on Twitter, where we are at GemstoneMindMTG, on YouTube, where we are part of Commander Cookout Media Group. You can also send us an email, GemstoneMindPodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm John, and this is Gemstone Mind.